Now, anyways, without further ado, can I welcome the candidates for Communities and Equality Officer? Okay, good evening, welcome to the stage. Now, could uh, the two of you just uh, briefly give a quick, um, a quick minute introduction on yourselves and why you are running tonight? Hello, my name's Mia. Um, I would just like to preface by saying that I am a proudly disabled student. Um, so this whole thing of lights is quite overwhelming to me. So if I take a little bit longer to answer a question, I need to take a breath or step away, then that is why I'm doing that. But my, my name is Mia. I'm an art history and visual culture student. I am passionate about student safety. I believe that all that we do at the Guild is important, but none of this is possible without students feeling safe and included. My name is Khodam Osman. I am the president of Diplomatic Hub. This is a student-led society, and I'm running for the roles of equalities and communities officer because I found that communities officers are underrepresented in the university and we want to help them because they will come from a different background, they have a different culture, and their habits, their social events are different. So how we can work with them more in, and make more inclusive society, because it's a very difficult, the student who will come here for the master course, one year's course, and to engage with them. So we will find a way how to engage with them to create more opportunities for them and they will feel more comfortable in the Exeter and the further student will prefer to come to Exeter when they are choosing a university. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, my first question to you, this is a new role, so it will be partly up for you to, to define and I'd like to ask, what are your main priorities? My main priority is that the role really does reflect the community and of course I know that as one individual I cannot represent the voices of every member of our community and I think it's really important that this role is massively involved in the student body and frequently going to in-person events and society events and making sure that as much as possible takes as many student voices into account. I would say that first of all when we are talking about the communities and ethnic groups that uh, who people who are coming from that background, we should understand their difficulties, what difficulties they have in Exeter when they will come here, and how we can help them in a better manner and facilitate them. And they do not feel that they are less comfortable here or they are treated not well equally as like Britain students. So to make a more inclusive society, we should identify the difficulties they have and to work with them, to engage with them. So engagement is a very difficult task because different students have different priorities, but we should uh, bring some flexibility in this term and work with them. Thank you very much. And now, Karam, I'd like to then ask, uh, and this will go to, of course, you in a minute, Mia, but uh, what is your relative experience and how will you use this in the role? So I am the president of uh, the Diplomatic Hub, where I deal with different students. They come from different backgrounds. So it's dealing with different students is sometimes very difficult because they have a different idea, they have different thought process, and they want that things should progress in different manner. And you will work with them, you will understand them, you will give them a way, you will encourage them. So I have worked with a student that Last month we arranged an event in which we invite a Spanish ambassador and that was a very difficult task because he was a very VVIP guest in the Exeter and we make all this arrangement and at this time when we was distributing a work that what, who will do what, at that time we asked the student what you, how you feel to do that task and so where they are comfortable, we just tell them, okay, you should take that task and we will do the other work. So in this way, we created that event and we engage with this student and we understand their process, that where they are comfortable, where not they are comfortable. So in this manner, we could work more inclusively. So understanding a student first and then you are working with them, that's the best approach. Thank you very much. And Mia, if you would like to offer your answer. So in my year in industry, I was 
lucky to have the opportunity to create a equality, diversity, and inclusion strategy for the company. And in doing this, it was a four month long project, which I created a new strategy for the business on how to expand horizons for new employees and also improve the current situation for any employees that may be struggling in the community of our business. And I've also worked a lot with Sit Down and Shut Up, which is a student-led charity here in Exeter. You may remember some of the protests that we did. And in Freshers' Week, we put together a lot of series of events that were centered around student safety and inclusion for LGBT communities. I also run my own social media activism under the name Covering With Mia, in which I frequently talk to a lot of extra students. I talk to them a lot about their issues and mental health struggles, and I am aware that in this role, I may act as a bit of a sounding board for many different students' variety of issues, and this is something that I am used to doing on my account frequently and hearing student concerns. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I guess I'd like to open up the um, opening up to questions th um, from the audience. If anyone would like to go, uh, yes. Just to clarify that question to the audience, uh, we've been asked what your your physical plans are for if you take office, really. Shall I go? So me and Manan Shah, who's running for president, have been working on an idea together of creating a cultural competency board. I think this is really important. We have many incredible students at this university and student activists doing a lot of hard work in areas of EDI and not getting paid for their labor. And they're doing a lot of works within their societies and within their communities to support each other. And I think it's really important that we uplift these voices and make sure that there is paid opportunities for them to be heard and show a variety of student voices and get it heard by the university. So I would say that how we can, first of all, we should under, I said that we should identify their problems. So first problem is, is today we are dealing with inflation. Cost of living, accommodation cost is a big problem. So when the student will come from different part of the world, the big problem is the cost of living and their day-to-day -day expenses. So first of all, I will try to increase the hardship fund which is just 2,000 pound at the moment, but we will work that how we can increase that limit. And if we could not increase that limit, supposedly, we could, how we can offer them a cheap food that they will just do some shopping, some kind of get some discount on that. And we, we could make a more uh, opportunities for them uh, that they could save money and they could spare their lot of time to the uni, to their studies, not they are always going for the part-time work. They will go for the part-time work, but you know there are students who are joining the part-time work, then they sometimes it's very difficult to schedule, to manage their schedule. So therefore, we are trying our best to minimize their cost of study, their cost of living, and help them and work with them. So I will try to increase the hardship fund, which is very important at that moment, I think so. Yes, thank you very much. Now, we also do have some questions coming in from, from the live stream. Um, firstly, um, how, will you work, how will you work to promote and strengthen the Guild's advice service? Karam, should we come to you first? So, the Guild's advice service, I think, is very effective, but we can uh, just uh, make it further better. And this is only possible that if we will identify the problems in an efficient manner. So uh, the students send their queries and they will ask for the help and certain level of help they will get. But this help has some let, uh, limitations and how we can improve that limitation in a better manner. So for this, we should identify their problems that what the university is currently doing for them and what the university could, bet, bet, uh, could, could do something better for them. So we will f try to fill that gap. We should understand the resources of the uni, and we will just manage them in a better manner. 
Before we answer the question, I'd just like to add about the wonderful point about the hardship fund that I've recently discovered that the Success for All fund is actually limited to international students. And I think this is crazy in regards that it's called a Success for All fund, but is limited when it comes to international students and they are not allowed to get the same amount as UK-based students. And for the question with the Guild's advice, I think that the most important thing is that we begin to diversify the way that the university is offering services. As an autistic person, I know that a lot of the times the things that are on offer are difficult for me or too stressful for me to access. And I think we need a diversification of different ways of receiving and helping students, being that online or on email, on phone, having in-person forums, having one-on-ones in person. Um, so there's just better variety for unique student needs. Okay, thank you very much. Now, a little bit of focus on to equalities. And Mia, I'd like to ask you, where do you think the main work needs to be done in order to get equality amongst the students? That's a very big question. <laughs> um, as I said, I think the most important thing is uplifting students' voices as much as possible. I think that it's important that we are hearing from different parts of our community and giving multiple opportunities for that. I think it's important. I know we have the guild drop-in sessions, but I think that needs to be specified to certain issues and certain concerns that are gone on going on at the uni that people can then contribute to and add to. And just having the guild officers being constantly present. I know that my myself personally didn't know about the guild officer roles until very recently, and I think it's important that there is more one-on-one -on -one human faced interaction with them so that student concerns are heard. Thank you, and Karam? I would say that we should not just think that this Britain students, they are well educated, they will come from a very supportive background, and the student who will come from different part of the world, they are equal. They are never being equal because they will come from different background. They have a different social and cultural problems. They sometimes could not deal with them. When they will come to the UK, sometimes they have a linguistic problems. They lose their confidence because they will just turn up to the new society where the people are dealing or uh, communicating in a different manner. When you will see the Britain people, Britain people are very confident. So the level of confidence the Britain people have it and the other communities is, is a far big difference between them. So we should work in them and we should just try to fill this gap and we should ask your student when they will come to UK, how they feel at that moment, what was the issue with them and how after one month, two months, what problems they identify, how they deal with them. So we should support them. We should just discuss all these things with the student and make a very comprehensive policy for that and especially the student who will come here for the one uh, for the master they have a just one year in the one year they have a very hectic uh, study schedule and this that they could not uh, get all the opportunities i talked with so many students they told me that they they are not checking the guilds email i said why they told me we don't have a time to to see all these things and manage with all these problems so we should work very efficiently for that i think Okay, thank you very much. Now, keeping a focus on, I guess, keeping sort of the focus even on communities a bit and the gap between them, I would then like to ask, how would you then respond when, say, there are two groups or societies who end up, en end up clashing, unfortunately? Um, Karam, would you like to start that one? So I would say that the best way to communicate with them, why they are clashing, what are the reasons of their clash, why they, they are not communicating with each other, and we should understand these things, and we should identify the problem, and we should work with them, and that definitely be resolved. If we will communicate with them, we will mediate all this situation. We will understand where is the problem. We will identify the problem, and then we will work on that. And that will be resolved. So discussion is the way where you can make a break breakthrough. You will understand the difference of opinion. You will understand the problems. And you will find a solution according to them. I totally agree that I think debate is completely healthy and of course freedom of the speech at the university is incredibly important and that different opinions are heard. Of course this has to stay within the protections of making sure that this doesn't incite hate speech or bigotry towards any social group but I think otherwise than that it's important to foster healthy debate within societies. Thank you very much. Now just sort of as a follow-up question we got this from the live stream 
How would you then deal with situations where one group believes that their equality is being threatened by another group's variation of what constitutes equality? Mia, could you start with that? That's a very hard <laughs> question again. Um, I am not sure exactly how to answer that. I think that's something that I hope I will learn further in the role and something that I am passionate to work towards, but I'm not sure at this time. So I would answer that belief is belief. Belief is not something a very arguable thing. It is a just a, some, somebody is thinking in a particular manner and that is changeable. And that could be changeable by answering uh, their doubt and by communicating. So uh, belief is not something that if I will see something and I believe this is true, it must not be true. But there are so many people, they have a difference of opinion. But you can convince them with argument. And we will definitely convince them by arguing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, once again, we'd like to open the, um, open the floor to audience questions. Uh, yes, you there in the front. Just to clarify that question, the audience member has asked, how will you deal with racism from staff members? I think this is a huge, huge issue at a university which goes for any um, group of a marginalized identity at university. I personally, as a disabled student, have had lots of ridiculous remarks made towards me from lecturers. I've had lecturers tell me, well, how are you at university? I thought autistic people can't speak, and many comments like that. Um, I think what we need is better training, and I think that we need a better complaints procedure. I think there's a massive issue at our university where complaints procedures don't feel safe and don't feel validating. This is massively reflected by the sexual assault statistics at this university, where I'm pretty sure officially they said there's only been two in the last few years, when actually we all know the number is far, far greater. And I think that goes for the same with any sort of insensitive comments made by lecturers where students feel scared to come forward, they feel scared that it's going to affect their grade and possibly impact them badly, and especially if they go through that procedure of complaint and they don't get validated, it of course is just a negative experience. I think we need better training, and I think that's another thing that I would like to give paid opportunities to different communities in the university to work on training sessions to help teachers with cultural competency and issues such as this so they can be better prepared to deal with a variety of students? I would answer this question that uh, definitely there are some time students feel that the remarks are derogatory or discriminatory. But I think that we should work with the teachers. We should understand that and we should ask them why you make this kind of remarks or your communication is just sound to be a derogatory. And uh, we should work for that. We should work mutually for that. And we will raise this uh, issue to the training group who are just uh, providing training to these teachers. And we will tell, discuss with them that how we can improve the teacher services for the students. And because the students are coming from a different background and they have uh, this kind of remarks uh, they receive from the teacher. And I never appreciate this kind of remarks, and we will work for that. But this is the, the, the solution of this problem of working. If we will raise this issue to the vice chancellor, we will discuss with them, and they will definitely make improvement for that, because they want to facilitate the students. And definitely, we will get up with a good solution. Now, thank you very much. Now, of course, I'm aware of time. So if you could both uh, give me a closing statement and to tell, of course, the audience why they should, you should, they should be voting for you. Uh, Kuram, you start. So first of all, I'm the guy from the ethnic background. I come up from a very difficult situation. I know uh, I have the practical experience of all these difficulties. And uh, someone will turn up before me and they will ask about their difficulties. I could understand them. And I will try to help them. I know uh, uh, I could understand the feeling of human being. This is the basic, basic instinct that I have. And I will utilize with that. And I will help the student as much as possible. And my aim is to make this exit a, a better place for the students. Because one day after completion of my PhD, I will leave that institu institutions. 
But definitely when the new student will turn up and the current student, they will feel that it's a far better place for them as opposed to the other u universities. And we should need to work hard to get advantage of that situation and to improve the services of the university. Mayor? I want to do this role because I feel I have lived experience of being continually let down by the university and being disappointed by how the university has dealt with certain situations. I understand what it's like to go through the welfare system. I understand what it's like to go through the complaints procedure systems. And I know how devastating they can be and how they let a lot of students down. I think that I have good ideas of policy and how to make changes. And I also think I've shown through all of the free work that I do on my account that I have a real passion for these issues and that I will continue to put that passion into the role. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk with the both of you tonight. And I assume we're going to have a quick break before we then move on to the candidates for student living officer. So thank you very much. OK, everybody. So thank you for that excellent discussion we just had talking to our candidates for communities and engagement. We will now move on to the candidates for the new role of student living officer. So I would like to welcome them up to the stage. Hello. I will I'll let you get seated before I start bombarding you with questions. So if you would like to introduce yourself to our audience and everyone here today. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Kavanagh Davis Holmes, or Cav for short, it's much more convenient. Um, I, I completely forgot your question, I'm sorry. Just go give us a quick introduction of who you are and what your campaign is. Oh, I'm a third year um, politics and sociology student. Um, and I'm campaigning to become the student living officer because it's a pretty important issue that I think everyone is touched by. Um, so, yeah. So, Cav is not our only candidate for this role. Uh, we also have Pip Short, who was unfortunately unable to be with us this evening. So, I'm just going to read her statement so you can get an idea of what her campaign is about. In a recent poll, Exeter students identified finances and housing to be two of their main concerns for the coming years of university life. As a third year, I've experienced myself or seen a lot of my friends deal with difficult landlords, financial difficulties, problems within the local community, and issues of safety around Exeter. The total number of Exeter students has risen by 26% in the last five years, which also means that finding affordable housing is particularly difficult. And that there is so much more we can do to support students who are struggling to find somewhere to live in a stressful October house rush. I would also like to provide a platform for support and legal advice for the staggering number of students who are having issues with housing or their landlords, making every student aware of their basic HMO requirements so they know when action needs to be taken and are supported through that process. As inflation and cost of living impacts day-to-day -day expenses and student loans remain the same, I would like to do more to support students financially. For example, installing a bulk zero waste station where students can fill up their empty bottles of cosmetics, packets of food essentials, and washing up liquid or detergent for a reduced price. I would also like to change the perceptions of campus security, as they are ultimately there for student safety, perhaps having a safe zone and a patrol to walk students home if they are alone. I was greatly encouraged to see that the Guild created this new role and feel that my personal experience with these issues will allow me to target the specific ways in which students feel their university experience can be improved. Okay, so that's Pip's statement. If you want to find out more about her and her campaign, head over to the Guild website for that. So, first of all, Cav, I've prepared some questions to ask you about the role. Yep. So, given that this is a new role this year, it will be up to the elected officer to define it for the future. What do you believe the purpose of the role is and what are your priorities? Um, I believe the role is twofold. Um, obviously, you have the immediate welfare provision um, that's necessary with any role of this kind. So that's um, anything which is active and now. And then also, I think we need to kind of look more longer term at kind of more awareness and campaigning and kind of getting some of the bigger issues that we don't have the power to address in a year. So for example, Exeter doesn't have a lot of affordable housing for students um, and the student numbers have risen and houses just haven't because they're not being built. Um, so for longer term stuff, that's gonna have to be established now. Um, yeah. 
That's a fantastic answer, thank you. So, discussions about housing. What will you do to support first year students looking at second year accommodation? Um, I'd like to see a, maybe a broader system of kind of, what would be a term? I would quite like to see like a broader system that addresses which are good landlords, what their negatives and positives are. Obviously, like it would be nicer to have a more unified look uh, relative to Exeter. Um, so having stuff like uh, advice on private landlords and uh, groups like Cardens, which many go to, um, as well as that, making sure that those options are accessible to everyone. Um, so have maybe uh, a focus of putting that online as well. As we've seen over the last year, living costs are flexible and can change frequently. How would you ensure that you're responding to the changing needs of the student body? Um, I would actually quite like to have an annual review into this. I think it's a very tumultuous topic. Um, we've seen recently with COVID and the more broad cost of living crisis that our student loans do not adjust in the same way as the cost of living. So I think that on the long term, you've got to kind of take in information from Exeter's student body and review that and then make policy based on that. Thank you for that. Just one more question before I move on to audience questions. As a Guild officer, your authority is, or would be, mainly focused around campus. Part of your brief as student living officer would be student safety. How do you help students who don't feel safe when they are not on campus? Um, I think a lot of that is going to be expanding, like, like Pitt previously had said, kind of expanding campus securities, kind of roles and responsibilities. Um, but also I think you need to more broadly look at uh, the way that but the local government funds police and kind of there's certain places in Exeter which are not very well lit for example um, they don't get a lot of traffic and therefore can be quite daunting um, as well as that we've got um, a rising of stuff like spiking which is obviously awful but I think we need to look at trying to solve those kind of issues as well because there's going to be a lot of people who come in who may not know about those issues until it happens to them or someone they know, and they don't know how to react. So we've received a question from the live stream. Exeter is infamous for having very early dates to start looking for housing. What ideas or ways do you have to tackle this problem? Um, I think, again, it's kind of a broader topic. Um, so could I get that name again? Um, so the question was just, Exeter is infamous for having very early start dates to looking for housing. What ideas or ways would you like to tackle this? Oh, um, I think that having some kind of... Again, it's not a question. Um, obviously, the culture isn't going to change without active intervention, but until we kind of get a... It's not investigated a lot. Um, so without saying too much and trying not to give you an answer that isn't an answer, um, we need to examine the underlying causes of why there. Um, in particular, I think the lack of affordable housing and practical housing for students as well um, can be a big driver of that because it feels like everyone's trying to cram into the right houses. Um, so again, longer term, that would be probably like pushing for more local housing projects. Um, shorter term, will have to be uh, a bit more conscientious of it. Thank you for that. Are there any questions in the audience? Um, on the left-hand side, yes? Yeah, you, Tom. Okay, um, for those of you in, who didn't hear, I'm free, free to interrupt if I didn't understand your question. Um, but the question is about Exeter University increasing the fees for first year accommodation, a rise by roughly 7%, was that? So yeah, a rise by roughly 7%. And um, what would you like to be done to that? Um, I think, realistically, I wouldn't like it to change at all. Um, obviously, there's uh, a number of other cost concerns there, uh, inflation being a big one. Um, 
but preferably student, they should always be student housing, especially in first year, that's available to people who are from a poor socioeconomic background. I think that Universities Act is kind of a very good innovator of social mobility, and so you need a safe place for people who maybe are not comfortable with finances um, to go straight away. So I think it's not a great idea, especially considering the state of some student housing or student accommodation even. Thank you, good question. We received another question from the live stream. When student housing is the number one cost for students and mostly out of the university's control, how exactly do you intend to assist students struggling with housing costs? Um, I would like to see a broader range of welfare provision. Um, we saw this year, I believe, the uh, hardship fund got extended, and I think in cases automatically applied. Um, I think that's a step in the right direction, um, but more kind of broadly, I think we could use more targeted stuff as well, um, be that short-term loan or just flat a grant. Um, as well as that kind of scholarships and that kind of stuff would also be useful. Um, but I think that there's a limit to the roles possibility in a year. And that's why kind of longer term there needs to be systems in place that can better represent that issue. Are there any other questions in the audience? Uh, not you, Joseph, behind. So the question is about the number of students at Exeter increasing year on year, but the number of houses pretty much stays the same, and how would you deal with issues with that? Um, I think that's a specific issue, not a specific issue, but an issue very heavily tied to the way that the university does admissions. Um, realistically, you would perhaps want to add a cap over that limit, Again, it kind of feels like a bad situation because then you're saying, don't come here. But like, realistically, everyone needs a house in Exeter. Um, so trying to go, say like, oh, I'll build a house wouldn't be useful. Um, I think in the short term, um, more kind of welfare needs to be provided and more ways around that. Um, it's going to be awkward because it's a very out of power issue um, realistically the people who control that are the local government which we could then try and push and campaign on but that is their decision um, which yeah. isn't very hopeful thank you for that answer we'll take one more question from the audience now uh, are there any more questions yes So that question, for those who can't hear, is about negotiating and talking with stakeholders in the local community when it comes to sorting numbers of housing for students. Uh, that's a really good point. Um, I feel that you've got to engage with stakeholders. I don't think this position would be possible internally to the kind of student body. Um, obviously, there is a tension there, um, and it won't be dissolved instantly. Um, but... I think Exeter is heavily influenced by its university um, as well as by its university's population. Um, there's a lot of people who work there, a lot of people who study there. So I think we, there's leverage there of like, listen, this is something which won't go away. Um, and as much as people are saying like, oh, listen, this is a really big issue with like, 
uh, students having taking homes from families and stuff. I think it also is also worth mentioning the universities are going to stop doing that. Um, so realistically, what you need is for a intervention with local government um, to try and remedy that issue. Again, a, it's a long-term thing. There's no like prefab house that you can make. Thank you for your answers to all of these questions today. So before we finish up, I would like to give you the chance to summarize your campaign and why do you think people should vote for you? Um, broadly, I believe a longer term approach is necessary for a lot of these issues. Um, I think that there is certainly some things we can actively do, especially with kind of like working with uh, the police and enforcing bodies, um, as well as intervening with the local government. But I also think we need to set up a system to deal with this long term, which may be two years, it may be three, it may be ten. Um, but that's the practicality of this topic. Thank you for that, and thank you for coming today. And remember, check out Pip's campaign on the Guild website if that's something you're interested in. So, yeah, thank you for coming today, and that is one of your candidates for Student Living Officer. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Question Time event, and the last Question Time event this time for President. I'm Victoria Ship. I'm Head of News at Expression FM, and I'll be very pleased to welcome all six of our candidates for president to the stage. Perfect. As you can see, we've got a very packed panel, so I'm anticipating a lot of discussion, but I thought we'd start with allowing each candidate to spend about a minute introducing themselves and why they're running. And I think we'll start with Emma and then work this way. I'm your current Vice President, Liberation and Equality. I'm a history graduate and a climate justice activist. Um, outside of university, I've worked with several campaign organisations, I've worked with think tanks, lobbied for climate policy, and been a COP26 delegate. In my role as Vice President Liberation and Equality, I've used my activist skills for the benefit of all students, working, for example, with the Two Pound Meal campaign, <laughs> which started off as a simple idea in my head, but soon translated into an amazing initiative and radical change for students by offering affordable food on campus. Um, I know what it's like to balance work, studying, and your mental health at uni, so I'm really keen this year to potentially use the year to reimagine the wellbeing services. Um, outside of university, I'm a keen runner. I'm the ex-president of Cool Runnings. I love spending time in nature, and I love live music. Um, so yeah, vote Emma for radical, compassionate change and a uh, radically transformed guild. Hi everyone, I'm Mathias, I'm a third year international student. I've been president this year of the French Society, publicity officer of the Italian Society, uh, president of also two other societies. As I've said to a lot of people, you know, uh, I've committed my life for the last two years uh, in for really Exeter to make it really amazing and improve a lot of stuff for students, organizing events. As we say in sport, you know, bleed green, that's most important. And uh, yeah, m m one of my three main points is really it's about represent students, all students, international students, home students, really every student uh, on campus. Communication, uh, you know, use way more social media rather than emails, and uh, collaboration between societies and group of students, that's really the most important. Hi everyone, my name is Manan. I'm a final year law student. I'm an international student from Canada, uh, as well as a mature student. Um, and I have a lot of experience working in EDI. I've worked on an anti-racism project right here at Exeter in my first year, uh, as well as being the formerly known as BAME officer, now turned cultural competency officer of the Law Society in my second year, um, and have spent this final year uh, trying to juggle not only final year of law school, as well as a part-time job, and my mental health, and trying to live somewhat of a social life. Um, on top of all that, I, I realize just how difficult it is to be a student um, trying to like guide your own way through this cost of living crisis. 
Um, and I think our students deserve a lot more support. I think that EDI and welfare should be a major focus for the guild for societies and clubs um, and not be so much a tick boxing exercise as, it, as, as I've seen in my experience. I think students deserve more opportunities for student activism, uh, something that I know I'm deeply passionate about and I know a lot of our students here are as well. Um, and on top of that, I think the students need a little bit more financial aid. As I've said, this cost of living crisis has been brutal. International students seem to have been left behind, I know as one of them. And I think that we deserve more support. <laughs> Yar, me hearties. Me name be Captain Hook Talent. And I be the third fiercest pirate on the seven seas. For many a year, I be making a name for myself plundering and pillaging the southwest coast. But now, I find myself shipwrecked ashore the coast of Devon. So, I seek new glory, new booty. And so, in order to facilitate my goals of becoming the most feared pirate on the seas, I seek to become the new guild president, nay, pirate king of Exeter Students Guild. If ye be wanting a year free of scurvy, but full of adventure, then ye best be voting for me as your new pirate king. Also, to reward any good questions tonight, I be offering ye a gold doubloon given freely for the best questions tonight. Yeah! A really hard, <laughs> a really hard one to uh, to uh, yeah match. Um, hi everybody, I'm Jack, um, and uh, the reason I am passionate about running for president tonight is um, coming to university has I know it's a very um, sort of um, yeah sort of standout phrase, but I um, has been a honestly a life changing experience for me. Um, has been a, a really great. Um, I mean. Education for me has not always been easy. Um, so from a, an early age, I decided university wasn't for me. Um, whether that was the learning difficulties, um, I don't know. Um, I was lucky enough that I was accepted to university. Um, didn't know I wanted to go. Got there, everything changed. Um, for me, what changed it, everything was tutors, um, study support, um, academic support, uh, well-being services on campus. Um, I do realize, however, I have been quite fortunate and not every, um, not every student at the university does have the same access um, that I have had. Um, so my desire to run for the role has uh, been because I know how influential and what a great experience university is. Appreciate not everybody has that experience at the moment and I'd like to ensure that everybody has the same um, opportunities I had as well. So um, yeah, thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Tejas Nathpal. I'm a student of finance and marketing, and I'm not a political candidate like everyone else is here. Uh, someone is president of uh, any society, and someone is already in the guild. Like I came here due to real problems which I and uh, me and my friends were facing. Facing, like uh, I face uh, some of the schemes which are available in the university. Uh, they do not. These schemes do not reach to every student. So uh, there's communication, like uh, we get emails, but we, but lot of students don't check those emails, right? And uh, we can post such schemes on Instagram and everywhere else so that every uh, one can utilize those schemes, right? And uh, also, I want to make guild better, but I will give my 100% to make the guild better. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to all candidates. And we're gonna get into the specific issues you speak about in your statements in a bit. But I just wanted to know, looking at the Guild and the roles at the, as they function at the moment, is there anything you would change about the general structure of the Guild before we start thinking about the like, issues you're going to start thinking about tackling within it? And we're gonna start with Matthias this time. We'll slowly graduate throughout the panel. Uh, yeah, so this is a really 
really important to change the advice team to well-being team because I think uh, you know a lot of students first of all don't really know about advice team and they don't really tend to go there because they they think you know they're not going to be listened or they think you know uh, the guild might tell to university this sort of stuff I've really noticed this year you know my experience this year as department officer for the department has um, SPSPA has told me that. You know, a lot of students are scared about uh, telling feedback because they're worried about the university, um, uh, you know, repercussion of what they could say or what they could do. So I think it would be really important to change the advice team to well-being team uh, with neutral uh, people. I think that it's really, really, really important that the guild stays neutral in everything, politics, well-being, every activities that we do. And, is, you know, the guild is really about listening and helping the students. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I think that the Guild currently has one way of working that can very much change. I think more diversity is definitely needed in the Guild um, to be able to voice a wider range of issues that our students have. Um, I think that it's rather unfair than to, to not be able to at least have somewhat of somewhat kind of representation throughout the Guild um, and instead uh, have more options and um, more, more of an ability for students to be able to voice their concerns, not only that, but also be given opportunities to work with the Guild in paid opportunities, um, something that um, one of the um, other candidates for, for Communities and Quality, Mia, mentioned the other day, or earlier, sorry, um, is that we've talked about a panel to work uh, together to give students, marginalized students, a uh, paid opportunity to work with the Guild and to provide their own advice, uh, something that the Guild so clearly needs. Because um, as we can all stand up, sit up here, um, but we can't speak for every student at this university because we don't represent every student at this university. All we can really do is uplift their voices and provide more opportunities for them. If ye be voting for me, then we be no longer a student's guild, but a pirate crew. And if that be the case, then we must overhaul the system to make sure that that is correctly presented. So, first, we be renaming Guild President to Pirate King to accurately represent my position as a fearsome swashbuckler. And secondarily, we will be adding a new position, mascot, so the position of my parrot, Bluebeak, may finally be respected by the entire student body. For only through na changing names and changing structure can we fully become the fearsome pirate crew we all be destined to be. Um, yeah, so um, I, think, I think the answer to my question would be um, I'm not sure we do need radical change at the moment. I think what we probably need is some stability. I think that the Guild at the moment, I would say, is probably on what I believe to be the right track. Um, and I think giving, giving it a few years, um, I, I think that we, we would see, um, I think as highlighted on the panel, I don't think we are representative of all students at the moment, uh, but I think we, we are getting there and we are putting things in place and I believe the team we have or the team at the Guild um, are, are doing these things and I think they, they will come over the years but I, I think what you need is you need stability over a number of years to be able to implement um, um, yeah, these ideas. So um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, if you will vote for me, like I'll work on the topics such as cost, cost of living. See, uh, we can introduce some better schemes to guild for uh, to improvise cost of living and to tackle the problem of inflation. Apart from this, uh, yeah, yes, all those schemes reach to every single student. Th this will be the main concern, and uh, uh, this w this will I will do for first. And apart from this, <coughs> we will focus on mental health. Me uh, like we'll introduce free sessions of meditation, meditations and yoga, so that. Uh, you know, everybody is dealing with mental health uh, is, uh, uh, for like academic stress, stress of not getting a job. There are a lot of stress in a student life, right? So we'll deal such stress and we'll promote student well-being to tackle such problems. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, sure. Um, so in terms of you know how the guild runs and what I would change, um, I do fundamentally think that there is too much hierarchy um, in the guild as it runs at the moment. Um, and like I mean, the structures in place where you have you know the student leaders and then you have SLT who are on like you know kind of triple even more of our salary. And I think that that fundamentally is ineffective in a supposedly like radically student-led organization. And I think that was the first thing that kind of really hit me like as Vice President Liberation. And I walked into an organization which still replicates kind of these same hierarchies. So I think that's one thing that I would definitely tackle um, as president. I think the diversity point is like incredibly crucial. Like we cannot claim to represent all students if we, we aren't like, you know, representing the broad range of students that we have. Um, and I do that through much more paid roles. I mean, I have been incredibly motivated by the fact that we do have um, more paid like EDI roles and like disability advisors, um, which have come in like literally in the last couple months, which has been awesome. But we need more of that. We need like double that. We need triple that. So we are genuinely student led. Um, and last, I'd say we need to bring back like things like Guild Council um, so that we are genuinely, you know, democratic. We've got more roles um, and we bring back power to the students rather than power to the top. So I've identified, I think, basically about four themes reading for all your statements. We've got cost of living, student representation, mental health, and kind of stu broader student causes. So I was going to go through one by one and let audience ask questions on each specific theme. So starting with the cost of living is something that you all mention in all of your statements. So what are your plans? What, what are your ideas to tackle this? Um, so yeah, the cost of living crisis is definitely something that's been hitting all of our students, and that includes me. Uh, it's been really, really difficult. Um, I know a lot of students do work. Uh, again, I'm one of them. Uh, working should really be a, m a means to supplement, not should not a m way to make ends meet for students. Our number one priority sh as a student should be to finish on our like work on our degrees and focus on our degrees. Um, and so, with the current cost of living crisis, has made it really, really difficult. Um, right now, the university offers the Success for All Fund. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that I've applied for it because I needed it. Um, and I am also quite, I was quite astounded to find out that it's limited for international students. International students um, are already put in a tough position as we pay double the tuition that home students pay. It makes it really, really difficult for us to handle any of our other finances when we're paying such significant amounts. I can say personally that in my first year, I paid 18,500 pounds, second year 18,600, and this past final year was 19,500 pounds, just in tuition, not counting anything towards housing, food, or any kind of entertainment or living. Um, so working, with the, working through the Guild would be to try to help subsidize some of these costs for students. Um, we've heard earlier about potential thoughts of um, working on cheaper food options for shopping. Um, amazingly, the Guild this year put out the two pound meal deal, which has been outstanding. Uh, and it's a great first step and I think we can always work on this more. Um, but overall, the Guild and the University need to work together to provide more for our students because it is uh, downright atrocious how students are living right now. Um, and I'm not just speaking on myself. I know that so many of my friends are in the same boat and I can imagine just how many students are like that. In these cost of living crises, it be essential that all me crew be meeting their nutritional needs. And so, in addition to obviously throwing me support behind more affordable food on campus, I be promising you all free limes so that none of ye may fall victim to the plague of scurvy. I have seen too many salty sea dog suffer this scourge of the oceans, and I wish for none of ye to suffer that same fate. But that is not all, for if ye vote me in, if possible, I will fight for ye all to be given a rum ration. Um, yeah, so um, I think it's a r really important question. I think um, I think that two two things really. I think that there are certainly localized um, solutions to to the problems uh, to the cost of living problem. Uh, so things like the two pound meal deal are great. 
Um, but I, I think ultimately my belief is that there's only so much power the university has to control the, the current situation. So um, I, in my eyes, th the role of the president is to lobby um, higher ups in, in, in the government, um, higher ups in um, universities um, to be able to make the change um, nationally as opposed to just here at the University of Exeter. Um, so for that, I think it's really important that you're able to um, build re relationships with other presidents at different universities. Um, I think the more voices you have singing from the same hymn sheet, if you like, uh, the better. Um, but um, yeah, so I, th I think that probably answers the question I in my eyes. I think that there are certainly localised things we can do. Success for all fund, hardship funds, two pound meal deals are all brilliant. Uh, but equally, I think the problem I is much bigger. And I think as president, it would be our role to uh, to take that, that issue further out and look at real, real change. So uh, this is the major concern, yeah, and to tackle this, right, uh, as I've said, that we'll bring some more schemes to the guild to for the c for cost of living, that, uh, though, uh, which will benefit students, and also one of them is uh, affordable food, as one of our candidate also said that, affordable food, and apart from this, like, uh, we'll do some part-time jobs from guild, and we'll make a channel, make, uh, make a platform on Instagram, uh, in which every every single job in the city we can we can collectively post there so that students can s see every single job in the city uh, through which we can make the both ends meet both ends meet so uh, that's how we are gonna tackle and also uh, like there are lot of uh, apart from food we can also focus to cheap accommodations in university we can fo focus on that as well like it accommodations are very expensive in Exeter or in UK, I can say they cost uh, according uh, up to 200 pounds per week, uh, 160 pounds per week. Th this is very expensive as compared to other countries, like from which I am like the country from I am coming from. So it's very expensive. So we can we, uh, we should focus on that cheap accommodations, right? To Im improvise cost of living. Thank you. Yeah, I think I want to start off by saying I think it is like an absolute injustice that students are being hit so hard. I mean, that anyone is being hit so hard by the cost of living crisis. Um, there's a study that shows that in the last kind of few months since the cost of living crisis has hit, that one in 10 students are using food banks. Um, and I think, you know, choosing between going to work, studying, getting the best degree you can, um, or being able to go to work so you can afford some food, like, is horrific. Obviously, this is a national problem, and I think, like, especially stepping into the role as president, um, I will do a lot more to work kind of nationally on government policy and using my skills as an activist um, to kind of push kind of this sway of government at the moment in terms of what they are doing for students, which is very little. Um, obviously, I've worked on things like the two pound meal campaign, um, but that's not a means to an end. I don't think that students should have to, in their part time work, like be working on a campaign so they can literally afford to eat. Like, it's been great and it's been amazing that we've now got that option. But I don't fundamentally believe that, like, that at the university, where, you know, we've got the vice chancellor, one of the top paid vice chancellors, and we're having to, like, use our spare time to kind of campaign for good food on campus it doesn't really sit right with me um but yeah as president i will you know fully support student-led campaigns to make differences for the cost of living crisis but i think it is that step up now and it's like what can i do in this role to work on a national level and really sway the political opinion and make students a priority because you know we are the future like we're getting an education because we want to you know go on to really amazing jobs but we can't do that if we're choosing between heating eating and studying so yeah i think national campaigning but also empowering like small scale um things at the uni i think there will be three main things to talk about when it comes to cost of living uh first of all as we all said you know the food uh, is really important uh, we students can, you know, continue to just spend so much money, you know, every day uh, for lunch, for dinner, 
uh, we when we come to campus, you know, we can't just continue going to the marketplace, which is becoming outrageously expensive because sometimes, you know, we don't have time. Uh, we we study a lot, so we don't have time to bring the food uh, from home. So I think it's obviously really important to reduce the price everywhere. But when I say everywhere, it just doesn't mean Stratham campus. It means also St. Luke's and every other places on campus not only DH2, which was already a great, great start, but I think it would be really important to continue putting uh, reduced prices meals around campus. So, you know, continue the two pounds meal deal campaign, which was a great start, uh, you know, continues all with the, for example, I don't know, one pound coffee, for example. I think that would be really important. And, uh, <laughs> and I think also it would be really important uh, to represent every, every student uh, when it comes to all this stuff, because as you know, Manon said very good, you know, uh, a lot of international students, they pay so much, and I'm an international student. Luckily, I've been uh, arriving before Brexit, so I don't have to go through this, but I know how painful is it, because I have a lot of friends who are international, I've been president, as I said, of the French society, and uh, with the Italian society as well, publicity officers, so I've met a lot of people struggling with it, so as I think it's really important to work, not only to reduce um, university fee, but also accommodation, so on campus, with the accommodation uh, prices going up really, really a lot, but also accommodations in town, private accommodations, the depot, Clifford House, Central Living, it's really, really important to work with them. And also the Exeter Council, uh, as we talked about before with the other candidates of the uh, other position, like it's really important to work for everyone, represent everyone, international students, home students, we have to represent everyone. Otherwise, I don't think what's the point of being elected guild president? I'm here to represent everyone. Right, I was going to then turn to audience questions. Could we keep these brief and then also our answers quite brief as well or I will have to start cutting people off because we will just run out of time. Uh, Henry, do you want a question? So just to paraphrase for our audience at home, as your role on the tr with your role on the trustee board, would you support electing student trustees or any other changes to the trustee board? As ye pirate king, I wish to fight for a student's guild, a crew that all could be proud to be a part of. All student trustees should be elected, for we are a union or crew representing students, so power should rest within the hands of students. There is a place for outside advice, but all ye decisions should always be made by scurvy, well, scurvy free scallywags, the students of this university which the guild be made to represent. Um, yeah, so um, do I support electing student trustees? Was that, that, that was a question, was it? Um, I, um, no, I, I don't think I do. I, I think for me, um, I'd be happy for it to be a, um, a personal statement, um, a bit like a job interview. I think elections um, are great in terms of, um, obviously, um, democracy is what, <laughs> what this country is founded on. Um, but I, I think that elections do also put off some really great candidates as well. Um, and um, I, I feel that for, for me, um, the way we, we go about it at the moment, which is a personal statement, um, as if you're applying for a job, I is a lot more accessible. Um, do I support lay trustees being on council council as well? I do, yeah. Um, I think that as students, um, I don't think it would be, I mean, I'll speak for myself, um, that I, I don't have the life experience that certain lay trustees, I believe, bring to the board. Um, and as you right, rightfully did um, point out, there are some really important decisions that are being made at board level. Um, so I believe the more, um, the more 
people at the table, if you like, so to speak, and the more people from different backgrounds and areas um, equal a better decision ultimately being made. So um, I ho hope that answered the question there. Um, if it didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the student trustee should be elected because uh, any post in the guild which is uh, which represents students as well and which is for the student should be uh, elected there should be a democratic way, uh, democratic way so this is the thing i think uh, it should be uh, this post should be elected thank you mm, yeah i do um i don't think we can claim to be student led if you don't know who the board of trustees are and if you haven't had any say of who is directing the organization at the very top in a closed room. Um, so yeah, in simple answer to your question, I really fully think we should have elected trustees. Yeah, I think as well. I think it would be really important to have elected trustees because the whole point of the guild and the whole point of the trustee board is to really uh, you know, have actions according to what students want. So if we can't be there to listen to what students want, you know, what Again, as I said, uh, what's the point? <laughs> so we need to have them. And as uh, Jack said, really good. Like the point of our country, you know, the basics are of our country has been made with democracy. So it's really important to have these students get elected, that the student choose who they want them to represent, such as you're doing right now for the guild president and you know, all the other candidates. So yes, either with the trustee board or also with the council, I think it would be really, really important. Um, like most of my candidates up here, I agree. I think that uh, student trustees should be elected. I'm a firm believer in the electoral process, but I think it also um, provides a good opportunity for us to get some more diversity in the student uh, trustee board. Um, and yeah, uh, I think there's not much else more to say. All the other candidates have really much covered it, and I agree. Perfect. Do we have any other student questions? What if the outlets and food resources we currently have on campus are right for students on campus at the moment? And who was t whose turn was it to start? Was it Jack's? Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. sorry, I missed the question. Um, are the outlets and resources currently on campus right for students? Um, to be honest, at the moment, I, I think our, my biggest priority would be the, the cost of the outlets we have on campus. So I, I think we can be doing a lot better. Um, I, I think sometimes the argument we have is that we, we're a small university and we don't have the buying power um, of Morrison's, of Tesco, in order to bring our prices down for places like the marketplace. I'm not sure I buy that when um, down the road we have um, Saunders, for example. I hope, I hope I'm not going to be getting in trouble for product placement. Um, but um, they are a smaller um, place than uh, we are here. So in terms of buying power, um, that argument I'm not 100% convinced by. So um, obviously I would like to see a greater range of, of food on campus um, catering to all needs. Um, I think that um, ensuring that we um, have food which does cater for all needs is obviously really important, uh, but also the cost as well. And I, I think, um, yeah. <laughs> Can you please repeat the question? The outlets and resources we have on campus for students currently is adequate. Yeah, so yes, the outlet, uh, first thing, uh, the food, apart from the two pound hot meal deal, the food is very expensive. And uh, the ca uh, there should be more outlets of food uh, for every culture, I can say, whether it's Thai or it's Indian food. Yeah, it will pr uh, promote diversity, diversity for uh, for the food outlets, and uh, also the thing is the food should, if it's in university, it should be cheap because it is for students, it is for students. So that's the thing. I, this is all. Um, yeah, obviously it's not fit for students. Um, universities as a business are kind of exploiting the fact that students have like few options, especially on campus. Um, obviously it's a structural issue. It's the marketization of higher education people coming to uni um, as a business, as like a transfer rather than education being treated as a public good, um, which it is. Um, I think, you know, although the two pound meal is great, it's an add on. It's not actually like genuinely assessing like the structures in place at the uni, which mean, you know, we have like these really fancy, great outlets. Um, but for students, you can't afford it, including me. It's not so great when it's kind of like you see the normalization of things like a really expensive coffee and it just makes you feel like oh I don't belong here I don't belong at Exeter because I can't afford a Pratt I can't afford a Starbucks every day 
Um, so yeah, I think it's about returning power to the students, potentially having like student-owned, student-led outlets um, and kind of bringing back that power away from the top, away from universities as a commercial business um, to universities as a place for education um, and nourishment, I guess. So yeah, I totally agree with uh, what all the candidates have been saying. And uh, yeah, I mean, if I had to answer to the question, I would say no, clearly not. <laughs> because I can't believe it that in 2023, students here at Exeter can still say, oh, no, I can't have food today because it's too expensive. I don't have enough money. No, it's just not acceptable, you know. So <laughs> next year, if if you do choose to elect me as guild president, I can assure you, but really I can assure you that no students will be saying that anymore. Uh, the two pounds meal deal uh, has already been a great, great start. And as I said, it's really important to expand it around Streatham, around St. Luke's, around, you know, everywhere uh, regarding to the university. And so, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, we can't just hear, we have to represent Every, every student, ev a lot of students are struggling right now and w I just don't want to hear anymore next year, oh, I can't buy food today because I don't have enough, I, you know, it's too expensive, I don't have enough money. Um, yeah, uh, to all of that, like we said already earlier, the two pound meal deal has been great um, and I agree with what Emma was saying with more uh, student-led, student-run businesses. I don't personally believe we need a Starbucks on campus. I can't afford a six pound coffee every day either. Uh, seems a little bit outrageous, but I mean, what can you do? Um, or even a really expensive toasty from Pret. Um, I know from my experience in my first year, um, when I lived in La Frada, we had a little food spot uh, in Cornwall House there, which was quite cheap overall for what you can get. Uh, and more uh, food spots like that, more outlets like that, are needed more uh, cheaper food options, but I think more uh, all inc all inclusive options, uh, halal options, uh, more vegan options, more vegetarian options, because there's so many students now with with um, different dietary res restrictions and requirements, uh, and we should be working towards being inclusive to all of them while continuing to keep the cost down for students. If me crew are to be free of the plague of scurvy. We must be ensuring that food across campus be affordable, healthy, and nutritious. I believe, the, I believe this be agreed by our candidates, but they be lacking a method to fund this. They be promising money without telling ye how they will be getting that money. And so, to ensure that we can offer this affordable subsidized food, I be having a plan. Upon completion, of my new ship, the Treo War. I propose that we as a new pirate crew set sail and build up our reserves to offer to our students by plundering and pillaging the banks of students' unions across the world. We will set sail for adventure, yeah! Thank you very much. I think we'll move on away from cost of living to other issues now touching a bit on well-being which is something a lot of you mentioned in your statements as well how would you seek to improve these well-being services and it's just see well-being is the main concern like we, uh, we came from different cities we are away from home and we are uh, alone without a family without a family so as i've said that there are a lot of uh, stress in our life as a student life uh, whether it's academic stress, whether it's stress of not getting job, wh whether any any sort of stress, any s uh, of being alone. So uh, yes, for well-being, like there should be uh, so, so much to do in this well well-being, like uh, uh, meditations, free sessions of meditations, yoga, counselings, counselings, and and a lot more, l lot more to focus on. So we can pre create a in uh, an environment in the university. That everyone is like, they can feel uh, a home away from home. Home away from home. So that's the thing. Thank you. Yeah, um, obviously, yeah, well being is such a huge issue amongst students, amongst young people, um, especially like post COVID. Um, in this position, I've been like really privileged to meet regularly with like the heads of well being and kind of talk to them about the problems, which is just consistently underfunded, under resourced, massive expectation from the university. Um, 
and yet it's just it's not fit for purpose and it fails to get to the root of the problem because I think students often feel they need to be an absolute crisis to like call that number and it's like you know calling 999 and it's like you know if you're not really really bad it's like you know what you have to wait like a month um, to use like a really brief case study uh, I met recently with a student I'm sure she won't mind me like mentioning it but um, she did like a drama project uh, back in November and she was sat around here in the forum and she sat there for about um, I think it was like, like 12 15 hours or something um, a long it was a long time and she sat there in like a bed and she had like a thing around her and it said like, like come and talk to me about how you feel um, it was meant to just be kind of like a light, a light-hearted kind of thing um, for a drama project. Um, but she emailed myself um, and the president, um, saying like, "Oh my goodness me! Like the stuff that people have come to me saying, and like the amount of people who have just wanted to speak to someone." You know, she had people like there for like about an hour, um, literally one person just speaking to her because she hadn't been able to get through to anyone. Like, and all these first years who have just kind of like come to uni and like been like so overwhelmed because you have like the rush of freshers week and then it's like then what then you're kind of like locked away and you're kind of like accommodation and it's like if you don't make friends it's really really hard but anyway the point of that was like you know students just want to speak to someone they want they want someone visible to go to and I think especially like post-covid like we've gone so much online now it's like that human connection is so rare and we need to bring that back um so I think you know reimagining well-being having it having something in person like some kind of hub this was her idea and I'm you know we're collaborating we're, we're thinking of things but some kind of like hub where you can go to and like speak to well-being like more of those I know we have like little ones but just something a bit more like literally come and talk to me now rather than like come and talk to me book an appointment and talk to me in two weeks like just more people and we've got the resources we've got the residents live team we've got so many people anyway I will shut up well-being is huge and we need better As all the candidates said, well-being is a very important stuff. Uh, obviously, the students are getting worried and worried uh, more and more every day. And uh, there are three main things that I think it would be really important to, um, you know, to advertise and to propose. Next year, if I do get elected guild president, the first one would be one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, meetings uh, with the guild officers because we need to listen to you. We are here to listen, we are here to represent you, and we're, we, we're here to do the actions that you students want. As I kept on saying, you know, your wishes, my commitment. So, you know, le very important to listen to all of you. I also propose a one hour per week uh, free slot for every student that wants in collaboration with the AU, because uh, I think sports is a really, really important stuff, uh, you know, to do when you're just a normal human being, not a, not only a student, to distress. So I don't think, uh, you know, I've been, for my last three years in Exeter, I realized that sports sometimes can be really expensive. So I think it would be really important to work with the AU uh, to, um, to be able to offer this uh, opportunity of free sport for everyone. It could be meditation, gym, team sports, you know, work with the clubs, work, work with the societies for people, you know, to feel much better and to enjoy the university experience. And then my last point, uh, my last point would be, sorry, to, um, to create a safe space, uh, such as the one in town, on campus as well. So not only the safe space in town should be open 24 seven, I think, because uh, safety shouldn't be only about during the night, it's also during the day. And also I think there should be one on campus because a lot of freshers, for example, who live in on campus accommodation don't feel safe, they're really worried. So I think the guild or even just a, spa a space for them should be open so they feel really safe to be on campus. Uh, yeah, to echo a lot of what the candidates have said, um, I know personally as an international student, I felt very uh, alone when I first got here uh, and did not help with my mental health. And I can only imagine how many students felt the same way. Uh, being a student at university is not an easy thing. There's a lot of stress. It's uh, in general a very high stress environment. Uh, where you have to juggle a lot of things at once, whether it's working or extracurriculars or friendships or relationships or whatever it is. Um, so there's a lot, I think, that we can do when it comes to well-being. Unfortunately, I think that our university's well-being center and um, is just very overwhelmed uh, with far too many students, like not with a lot of students wanting, needing help, but uh, not having the resources for it. I think the guild needs to step up and take more on for ourselves. Um, there's a lot of great ideas. Um, uh, 
well-being hub was outstanding. I think that'd be a great idea. Um, having more just opportunities to drop in and just talk to people because uh, therapy and counseling is not cheap. Not everyone can afford it. Um, and I think that overall we can create more, I think like you said, more safe spaces even here on campus uh, for stu maybe sometimes students with disabilities need to take time away, uh, time to de-stress, time to uh, when things get overwhelming. All of these things are possibilities where we need to make certain accommodations for students, for all students. Um, well-being is always going to be a major, major part of the student life. Um, I know from my experience in, in university, both in Canada and here, in my seven years of university, mental health is always going to be something that students are going to need help with. Um, I still need it now, um, and I think that it's always got to be something that we're going to be working on continuously, and it's not something that will be fixed right away. As a caring pirate captain, I be knowing that mental health be as important as physical health. I also be knowing as a ruthless pirate exactly what stealing be look like. This university spends less than 40 pounds per student on mental health. At the same time, it be spending over a thousand pounds per student on marketing. This be unacceptable. As ye pirate king, I be building a ship with a plank. And if the university not be reared, changing where it be putting its funds, funneling it from marketing into mental health, then I be pushing them all off the plank. Um, yeah, uh, so a re really important important issue as everybody else has highlighted. Um, I think the temptation here is to, to double down on, on the fact that we need to lobby the university to provide more money uh, to the wellbeing service and I, I, th I think we do um, but my concern is that I, I don't think it's working at the moment and I think if we're to chuck money at it blindly I think that the danger is is that the problems which exist currently um, might carry on so um, for me what what I, what I would also like to see the university being a bit more proactive on is equipping tutors with tools to be able to proactively reach out to students who potentially um, uh, are showing signs that they might be having a difficult time at the moment um, I think what we see at the moment or what in my experience is that some tutors are perhaps afraid to reach out because they're worried about saying the wrong thing or uh, wh whatever it may be um, so I, I think for me we need to equip the tutors um, with um, the tools that they need um, also I think for me um, uh, also um, I would love to, to lobby the university on changing the way we um, assess students here um, at the university so um, I think that if you get the assessment right um, a lot of the the other things fall into place I think at the moment we are very exam focused um, and I think uh, that the nature of education in general is, is very stressful um, and I think I'd like to see more um, discussion around how we can open that up so perhaps um, more coursework, video submissions, podcasts um, to ensure that everybody feels as though they are able to succeed at university. Um, I feel if you get that right I think that trickles down to everything else. Um, so um, yeah, sorry, a very long question there. Thank answer. You. I am going to go to the audience for one more question before I wrapping up as we are rapidly running out of time. Yes, you right there. That's a question about how to deal with the debt of the guild. Um, whose turn is it to start? Is it you, Emma? Um. Well, I think that's why we need elected trustees, isn't it? So we can deal with it properly. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, this is why we need a student-led guild who kind of like makes sensible decisions um, about like employment, about full-time salaries, um, and really kind of like reimagines the structure of the guild. And I think that's how we're going to deal with it. I think we definitely need to diversify our income streams because at the moment we're funded directly by the university and that makes our like independence and like lobbying really difficult because it's such a, a weird relationship where you've got a student's union um, advocating for change often from the university but yet we're relying on a block grant for the year for funding for our existence so I think definitely you know we need to diversify income streams um, and also elected trustees who really know what they're doing and student-led like really student-led 
I think that, yeah, it should be really much about uh, students also be part of all this deciding because, as I said, you know, we're here to listen and we're here to represent what you students want. So, um, yeah, I mean, as a Guild president, the only much we can do is really about pressure the university and uh, really, you know, tell them they're supposed to be here for students. I just can't be us. You know, it's just unacceptable. Sorry that uh, that the university are saying things like, "Oh, uh, yeah, we want more international students." So like that, they pay more, and we get m no money, and we get more money. Sorry. Okay, great. You're getting more money, but for what? Is it to help students? Yes, great. Which they're not doing right now. So I think it would be really, really, really important to pressure the university uh, to divide the cost in much better ways uh, so uh, we can have a much better life in terms of finance and reducing cost everywhere on campus. Um, yeah, dealing with the debt is uh, obviously not a very easy thing to do and not something that'll be handled quickly or in one year. Um, I think, as Emma said, it makes it very difficult when all of our funding comes from the university for us to try to deal and some oftentimes argue with the university or be in conflict with the university over change. Um, so um, I think it'd be a bigger part for the Guild to try to gain some more sponsorships outside of the university, um, work with local businesses to help um, with more of our food options on campus. There are so many local businesses in Exeter here that I'm sure would be willing to work with big organizations like the Students Guild, but uh, I'm sure we can get even bigger companies to come and work because the University of Exeter is a massive organization. Uh, getting them to work with us, I'm sure, will take some time and take some effort, something that the Guild should be putting towards um, to try to uh, lessen the amount that we need to rely on the university itself uh, so it makes it easier for us to question them and work against them to try to get more for our students. I be already presenting me plan to plunder and pillage unions across the country but in order to actually understand how to escape debt we must be understanding why we be three million pounds in it. Obviously I'd be quite impressed by the guild's power to not pay VI, to not pay VAT for many years, an act of thiever thievery that I am be most impressed with. But the majority of this debt actually be coming from two sources. The NUS, but most importantly, the SUSS. Every year, we be sending astronomical amounts of money to the NUS with very little concrete returns back. Even more, we be part of the SUSS, the Students' Union Superannuation Scheme, a joint pension scheme, which means we now foot the bill of students' unions which have gone bust over the last few years. It be for this reason that we are three million pounds in debt. We be not able to escape this debt while we still hand over vast sums of money to the NUS and be straddled with the debts of other unions across the country. If we are to achieve financial stability, we must achieve independence from the undemocratic NUS and the SUSS, which shoulders us with the bureaucracy and burdens that we must free ourselves from to be a true pirate crew. Um, yeah, no, I think I think for me it probably highlights uh, the importance of the the lay trustees, which we we mentioned about earlier on. Um, I think, uh, as you correctly noted, the guild president is is um, the chair of the board. Um, I, I I would hope that um, any of our, our our previous presidents wouldn't mind me me saying, but I'm sure that none of them would cl would claim to be experts in terms of. Um, accountancy, debt, those kind of things. So I think it's really important that we have really strong lay trustees uh, because, as you say, it's real money. It's a lot of money, and we could potentially get ourselves into a lot of trouble. So we need to surround ourselves with the right people. Uh, so th that would be my answer to that. Yeah. Uh, so to manage the debt, uh, we can do such things. Like if, if we are providing part-time jobs uh, with businesses, we can co collaborate with small businesses. And also there are casual casual shifts. So we can get commission through it. And uh, if we are providing this by guild, so that's the first point. And also we can encourage like uh, mental health donation camps. So uh, through this, we can also get funds, uh, manage the debt. And third, 
we can organize uh, parties for the students uh, by the guild and uh, through which uh, we can also keep the student engaged engage in uh, engage in uh, so that university is fun they find university <laughs> experience very good so that's the thing how we can manage it better yeah answer of those i'm going to give you very very totally monitored about 30 seconds to tell people why they should vote for you and then we will have to end as it is people need to enjoy their evenings um so who, who is it Mathias, was it your turn okay 30 seconds why should people vote for you uh, first, of all, well, people, I really want you to vote for me tomorrow and Thursday because I'm an apolitical candidate. I really want to represent the values of every student, home and international students. Uh, I think it's really, really, really important to work with people and the university to function with student-led decision because we're here to listen to you. And also, I will be a guild president who will be there when time gets tough with well-being and sport. I will be on campus tomorrow and Thursday, so come and see me if you have any questions. I'll be, I'll be very happy to answer. Um, well, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to try to keep it really short. Uh, I think you all should vote for me because I think it's time for a change in the guild. We need some more representation. We need some more diversity. We need to get more student voices up, uh, uplifted and talked about. Uh, we need more done from the guild. We need more. Uh, caring from the guild and overall we just need more done uh, and I think I have a lot of experience and a lot of passion to try to help when it comes to EDI work, student activism and more. If ye be asking a question tonight, I be leaving the golden doubloons there for you to come and collect. Now, if ye be wanting a year free of scurvy but full of adventure, then I be your candidate. For only together can we end the brutal reign of the vote goat. And only together can we make this guild truly the talk of the seas. So tomorrow, vote for Captain Hook Talon for guild president. Nay, Pirate King, yeah! Um, yeah, so um, why, why vote for me? Um, I think at the moment we have um, a really good relationship with um, stakeholders at the university. I think in order to be um, to make effective change, I think that you need to have a good relationship with um, stakeholders um, at the uni, um, albeit a critical friend. Um, I believe that I, I can um, support those creations of those relationships and um, yeah, keep keep those going. First of all, if you will vote me, you can approach me on any platform, anytime, and I'll make sure that I'll respond to your issues as soon as possible. And also, like I came here due to real problems. I'm not uh, like I'm not distributing pamphlets, anything, because mine was an eco-friendly campaign. I was distributing happiness with chocolates. So yes, let's build the guild together and vote for me, please. Thank you. I've got a track record of making effective change. And if you vote Emma, you're voting for a radical, compassionate student-led guild. And I just want to use my 30 seconds to thank all of you for coming, to thank the media teams for putting on like an amazing show. And yeah, for the also for the guild comms team for like enabling this and for you all listening to me to speak and all of us. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you all. I'd also like to reiterate thanks to the candidates and the audience. Thanks to Expose, Expression, XTV and XTech for doing all of the tech for both days, which has been a lot of hard work. If you want... If you want to know more, please go to the Guild website where you can see the candidate statements and be able to vote tomorrow. There's also the Expose interviews as well as Expression, who's doing week-long coverage if you want more information. Um, voting will be open from 9 o'clock tomorrow until 4 o'clock on Thursday with the results around on Friday evening in the forum. So check that out for the results. But otherwise, thank you and enjoy the rest of your evenings.